This week we're 800 k's east of Wellington on the remote and rugged Chatham Islands. We track down the best barbie in town and gather some wonderful and wild goodies to put on it. So join us for a Chatham Island barbecue banquet. A two hour plane journey from Wellington takes you to a group of islands where almost everyone knows how to hunt. Here we go, the Chathams. First to see the sun there, reckon? Really? <laughs> good one. She's a bit chilly, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. There's a smorgasbord of wild food yeah, here, and we're looking so forward to putting it on the barbie. Yeah. Groper, crayfish, power. Power as big as dinner plates, crayfish as big as small yeah. dogs. Yeah. Yeah. After leaving the holdie behind, our first job is to find some suitable transport. Our pilot, Darren, has come to the party. This looks perfect, Darren. Yeah, no, she's, she's pretty good. Pretty good and if you think flying a plane's complicated, think Don't again. Start these wires down here on this fuel solenoid, the fuel shut off. If you get those a wiggle, it'll open up that. So what you can do is get one guy turning the key, and if this is moving backwards and forwards, that ain't your problem. If that's not moving, that's your problem. The door handle's a bit not too well, so just use that bit of wire. Okay. Open it up like that. That's and, great. Uh, handbrake doesn't work too well. Okay. So just... The Chathams were the last islands in the Pacific to be settled and have a current population of around 600, made up of the indigenous Moriori, the Māori and European. Farming and fishing are the main industries on the island. And if you want some action, you head to the main port of Waitangi, home to 300, with the rest of the population scattered around the island and on nearby Pitt Island. We're looking forward to meeting a few locals at our barbecue. Oi! Not the best barbecue weather, mate. Not the best barbecue weather, but it's the Chatham Islands. Yep, plenty of catch to stick on it. Grow for that way for sure. What are you going for? I'm going for some wild sheep over there, mate. Wild sheep? I feel a bit funny about killing a sheep, but whatever, it's going to be great on the barbie. The key ingredient for any barbie is the barbie, and it's not the sort of thing you fly with. So I'm checking out some local options. Lavina? Yeah. Hi, how are you? Is that the grill? It is, out it here? is. Yep. Can we use that? Sure can. Fantastic. So we'll see you at four, four o'clock. What a beauty. How yeah, does mate. it work? So you just do a quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn. So four o'clock tomorrow? Yeah. You know where you are? Yeah. Helping me take a sheep off here. <laughs> All right? Sounds good, mate. All right, sweet. Let's go. Thanks, mate. Good. And we'll see you at four. Bring some sunshine. And an appetite. All right. Chatham Islanders have a great can-do attitude. Everything's falling into place, including the venue. The car park at the Waitangi's one and only hotel. Now all that's left is the food. And that should be the easy part. I'm going to check out where to find some kaimoana while Logie heads to Pitt Island to chase down some meat. I'm driving to Owinga Bay catch a boat, 45 minutes to Pitt Island. Pitt Island, I'm going to go hunting a sheep. I'm not feeling that good about hunting a sheep. I don't know, they're all fluffy and I suppose they are wild though. The Pitt Island wild sheep are descended from Saxon Merinos, dropped off on the island around 1841 to provide food for sailors and sealers. Their gamey lean meat will be a great addition to our barbie, but I have to catch one first and the best way to pit is to hitch a ride with the local fishermen. But it's possible to get a ride here over to Pitt Island. Yeah, anytime. Awesome. Well, I was hoping to go today, actually. No, nah, you won't get a ride today, mate. No way. Nah, it's 40 knots. Is it? Yeah. Too dirty out there. Yeah, it's a bit ugly. Most fishermen probably uh, having a day off today. That's a bugger. I'm supposed to get wild sheep. Bugger. Nice motor. How long have you been shining that motor for? Oh, since I've had it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no sheep leaves a big gap in the menu for our barbie, but thankfully brownies come to the rescue. The locals tell me there's plenty of power. Over the gate, across the paddock, and out on the reef. You don't even have to get your hair wet. What's your knees, mate? Looks ideal. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> mate, there's going to be dozens and probably another bag. We need heaps to fill in for the sheep. And the good thing is, there's a lot of different ways to cook them. Along here, there were quite a lot of broken power shells and stuff. 
I'm going over there. I'll look after your gear, mate. OK. It's not too bad. Really? <laughs> <laughs> we both wanted to go in, but Brownie won the toss. Good on you, mate. I think there's some over there. Yeah. Those are pretty flash-looking boxes, mate. Yeah. I brought my good ones to the chatties. Yeah. If anyone's going to get a power out of there, it's going to be Brownie. He's got this animal instinct in him. And he goes out in that bloody nasty, horrible cold wind. It's a, it's a gale force southeasterly. It's about five degrees, and the wind chill factor must bring it down to about zero. Jeez, mate. Yeah. Cold. A bit of disaster, eh? Yeah. No, they're probably never going to show us a spot, were they? That's not. Good effort, though, mate. Thanks. Proud of you. Those chatties. Yeah, they're all at the pub right now laughing their heads off. <laughs> Those stupid New Zealanders yeah. come over here. Oh, you go down, park by the gate, walk down the fence. Yeah. Yeah. We're calling it the Changeable Chathams. Not only the weather, but our best laid plans. We thought it would be easy pickings for our Barbie, but after being skunked on the sheep and the power, it's time to check out the insurance. Nothing better than the smell of a fat fryer, dude. Yeah, that smells good, mate. <laughs> I'm peckish as well. What a great little takeaway bar. Hiya. Hi. How's it going? Good. Yeah, one fillet and a couple of chips. Sure. Patrice Rogers has been running the island's only fish and chip shop for the past eight years. Yeah. Went away for high school and came back for a holiday a few years later and never left again. Oh, yeah. Mm. That seems to be the way about. You know? Pretty magical here, eh? It's yeah, really, really magical. a bit spoiled, aren't we? Yeah. And then you, you just go to New Zealand and you don't like yeah. it. It's too busy, it's too full on. And... Nice and relaxing, you know everybody. Oh, beautiful looking fish. The fish and chips will be a great backstop, but we're not giving up on the barbie. Logie's chasing down a local hunter, and I'm heading to the port. Fishing is huge in the Chathams, providing nearly three quarters of the island's income. Hey, guys. There's about 40 fishing vessels operating in the area, and one of them belongs to Jeff Clark. We're looking for some groper for a bloody barbecue. and heard that you were the groper guru around here. Is that right? Oh. Don't know about that. How's it going? Good, good. Nice to meet you. Yeah. The Chathams have seen a lot of fishing over the years. The 1960s were boom times, which saw up to 200 boats plying the waters for crayfish. Their tails sent to lucrative overseas markets. In six months, the factories exported 200 tonnes of crayfish as rock lobster tails to America. But eventually, it was too much. Overfishing led to a collapse of the resource and quotas were introduced. Before quotas came out, you know, it, they took a lot of fish from the island. Now that we've got the quota system in place, it's... Um, it's all come it, back. It's, all, it's coming back, yeah. In New Zealand, you only find groper in deep water. But here, Jeff fishes for his just a few k's from the wharf, where it's shallow enough yeah, yeah. to use hand lines. No fancy bloody graphite rods out here or reels. It's all bloody couple of couple of sinkers. I presume we put hooks on, or do you just catch them straight on those bloody knots? <laughs> <laughs> I might pay to put a hook on. Okay. Jeff positions the boat so we drift over the groper grounds. When we're in the right spot, he gives us the nod. Yeah, where well, it goes. Just drop it over. Deck hands, Duke and Pete, have it sussed, but for me, it's a different story. Yeah, just drop it on the ground and just let it go out. That's it. You're on to it. You're too used to fishing rods, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've always heard of, you know, <laughs> I just can't believe that we're handlining for Grofer, you know? I've got the door nailed, the wiggle under the bonnet. Oh, Darren forgot to mention about the tie going down all the time. So far, no sheep, no power. Things are getting a bit desperate. It might have to be what's known as a Chatham Islands National Tucker. And the man to see about that is legendary hunter Peter Thomas. Hello. How are you? Steve Logan. Hey, Steve. How you going, mate? Sorry to bother you. Are you the wicker man? Uh, well, yeah, we go and catch a few now and again. There's none left in the freezer, though. <laughs> oh, I was hoping you might take me out in the wild and. Okay. Um, hunting. Yeah, no, we, we can do that. 
Um, yeah. Might be a bit later on in the evening, though. That's cool. The dog, and um, we're going to have a look. That's cool. Want. That's how you do it with a dog. Yep. Right, hunting a sheep, that's one thing, right? But hunting a weka, I just don't feel good about that. They're beautiful birds. They're just like a kiwi, but with a short beak. I don't know. The secret is just keep it on the bottom. Oh, you feel bites immediately. Groper, to me, is, is still the best eating fish that comes out of New Zealand waters. We serve it a lot in the restaurant, and it's just one of those fish that just cooks so well, and it's got a lovely big flake, it's got a great, great flavour. Yeah. First drift. Oh, that's a beautiful cod. There you How's go. That? <laughs> that's a magnificent blue cod. Not the target species, but still fantastic fish. At last, we're off the mark. Some beautiful cod for the barbie, but I'm really looking for something a little bigger. What size could we expect to get out of here? Any, anything, really. Uh, pup grover to 20 kilos. 20 kilos. Yeah. yeah. Massive fish. Waiting for that big nudge. Have you got one? That or two big cod. Oh, we're on to it, boys. <laughs> Wait for some colour. That's a pup. A little pup. Yeah. Look at that. What a beauty. What a beautiful fish. They're a great looking fish, aren't they? Look at the size of the mouth on it. Yeah, beautiful. And a great eater as well. I mean, look at the red gills. Just magnificent. Where you go? Oh. How about that? Another groper, a couple more cod, and that hot plate's looking pretty sweet. To top it off, Jeff's throwing in a couple of craze from his holding pot. <laughs> Oh, boy. We're back in business. Some big boys in there. Yeah, big boys. Nice parking. <laughs> hey, Brownie. Nice timing. Looks like you've done it right there, mate. Not bad. Some of the local species. A couple of groper, plenty of cod. That's a good feed, mate. Beautiful fish, isn't it? How's yep. the old beast going? Don't hit it like that, mate. It's going to fall apart. <laughs> She's good. Got a bit of personality. <laughs> oh, there's a good lot of fish you got there, mate. That's awesome. Yeah, it's not bad, eh? You must be safe. Yeah, 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 yeah no, it was bloody good. Yeah. We're only out there about 10 minutes. And yeah, we've got something anyway. Yeah. You know, we're on the way. I'll leave Brownie to put his fish on ice for the night while I hook up with Pitta. Born and bred on the Chathams, he's been hunting and eating weka for as long as he can remember. My father, you know, like he took us a week out, we always had a wicked dog. It's a, it's a tradition. It's something that we've done all our lives. And, um, yeah. It's something you're going to pass on to your kids and oh, the, the young people. Absolutely. Young guys, yeah. Hunting wicked is a simple affair. Let the dog go, he sniffs them out, the squawk. and brings them back to us. See him out there? Oh, there he is. He's got one. Oh. Go there we Weka were brought to the Chathams from New Zealand in 1905 and thrived. There's now around 60,000 birds on the island, and while they're protected in New Zealand, here the locals are allowed to harvest up to 5,000 each year. Pitta's only after the plump ones. Yeah. Is he a young one or is he? Yep, no, that's a young one. We'll let that one go. All right. <laughs> okay. There's plenty of other fat ones around. Yep. We'll drive down a bit further. Yeah, we just need a couple. Where's he going? Oh, there he is. All right, you're out. You're in. Bring him here, mate. Don't muck around. Bring him here. Tackle Bring the leg here. here, Red. Good boy. He's got sharp, bloody claws on. <laughs> got a mean little beak on the bugger. And... No, he'll do you. Does he, what do you reckon? Does he feel like he's a right weight? Ooh, see that? Yeah. Nasty bigger. Yeah, no, he'll be right. Bring of the neck. <laughs> Not nearly as gory as I thought it might be. It's nothing wrong with the bird, it's perfect. The dog just brings it up, holding it in its mouth, and just like that, and he's, he's gone. Well, he's going to be in the pot. You're red. It's D-Day, or BBQ Day. And good news, Justin. 
The winter's eased enough to let one boat make it over from Pitt Island. Hi, how are you? I bet you're Bernie. I am too. <laughs> On board is Bernie Mallinson with a special delivery. Jeez, big effort. Thanks for this. Oh, no worries. Nice, Al. nice to meet you, Al. It's like your Steve. Hello. Nice to meet you. How, how are you? Doing? Good, thanks. Who's this? This is your mutton for you. Oh, fantastic. Good old Saxon Marino from Pitt Island. Saxon Marino from Pitt Island. Yeah. Beautiful. Fantastic. How often do you get over here from Pitt? A uh, couple of times a year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's yeah. enough. Thanks so much for bringing that over. Oh, no worries at all. After a couple of false starts, the Chathams is delivered. So now we have to. And first up, the mutton. Got some chilli and, and uh, cumin and rosemary and garlic. It's going to give it a nice bit of heat and crisp up the skin a bit and a bit of salt and pepper and get it underway. Beautiful. Perfect. That's underway, yeah. about three hours from now. While Brownie deals to his fish, I pop down the road and help Pitta deal to his weckers for a traditional Chatham Island boil-up. What about effort for a couple of hours' work? Now it's the dirty business. It's all about plucking, Dip it dipping, in. chopping, gutting, cleaning, okay. jointing, and then in the pot for some good old boiling. How long? A couple of hours, I'd say. Two hours, yeah. Yeah, just, just a simmer. Slow simmer. You can yeah. poke a fork into it. It's ready. Okay. Right, so we're uh, we're in the kitchen of the Chatham Islands Hotel, and we've been allowed in here by a couple of lovely chefs. We've got Sue over there and Jazz. They're just preparing the veg for tonight in the hotel. So we're going to start off with the harissa sauce, which is really pretty simple. Some cumin seeds and some caraway seeds. These are whole. Again, they haven't been ground. We're just going to heat them up on the pan. Harissa is a wonderful Mediterranean sauce, which goes brilliantly with red meat. We're going to spread it all over the mutton just before serving. It's made with a great mix of Mediterranean ingredients, all blended together to make a smooth, hot and spicy paste. We're also going to add some tomato paste. About a tablespoon of that. And they've got a lovely toasted flavour now. And I'm just going to grind those up. And you guessed it, they're going in there as well. So next we add some brown sugar, a little bit of sweetness. Some lemons. Make sure we eliminate any pips. We don't want any pips in there, they're really bitter. A couple of limes. And last of all, some olive oil. Harissa. Blend those all together and it'll have, be a beautiful paste. And that's that. I think it's going to be plenty hot enough. A barbie is about being relaxed, and that's all about being prepared, making sure there's enough wood or gas, and doing as much as you can beforehand. Our next dressing is a dry marinade for the fish called gremolata. Finely minced lemon rind, garlic and parsley are the traditional ingredients, but I'm also adding some mint. It's a lot of chopping and getting it all really fine, but they're all really strong flavours, garlic, lemon zest, parsley and mint, so we're just going to you know, sprinkle a little bit over the fish, but it just smells, oh, it smells absolutely beautiful. And finally, no barbies complete without that Kiwi classic, potato salad. Mine's got kumra, gherkin, red onion, chilli sauce, bacon basil, mustard mayo, and some beautiful local swan eggs. How's it going, likes? Good, mate, let's have a look. That looks Ooh, beautiful, doesn't say. it? It's a hot golden colour. Hey, Peter. Oh, yeah. Mate, you've been working hard. <laughs> well, it's done. Thank you. We just need to add the water crest. How long has this been simmering for? Oh, a couple of hours. A couple of hours? Oh, wow, that looks nice. really soft, mate. To water finish crest it off? In, yeah, 10, 15 minutes. She's ready to boil down quite a bit, so. So a lot? Yep. Does that go into the sauce, does Stack it? Stack it in. Yep. So this yep. is the legendary wicker guy? Yeah, this is the legendary wicker guy. Oh, hell yeah. Hell. Hey, Peter, how are you? God, I've all about you. Who, He's been a ledge. I heard you've been in the Andes. <laughs> <laughs> sure it wasn't power. a good sight, mate, but... <laughs> Words got out and people are starting to arrive. It's time to step up to the grill. Cooking up a bit of the blue pod first. <laughs> Slightly flouring it. And it's just cooking in a little bit of butter and olive oil. A little bit of butter there with a little lemon zest in it. Chatham Island's blue cod, set it a real delicacy. It's a gremolata. Just decided to add a little bit of olive oil to it. Yeah. What? Bit of padropa. Barbecue's beautifully. Uh, I'm not even flouring it, just throwing it straight on. Just lovely. Here you go, mate, you deserve a glass. Oh, so. Cheers, what have we got here? 
We've got dog the, point, our mates at Dog Point. That's right. And they make really lovely full body concentrated wines. This Chardonnay has got a little bit of acid character to it, which is really nice for the seafood, so that's why I selected it. Perfect. Oh, cheers, Brownie. Cheers, and they're great guys. And they're not bad guys. Yeah, yeah. they're good guys. Yeah. Cheers, thanks, guys. How does that look, Peter? It looks pretty good to me. It looks very good. Oh, look at that. That looks so succulent. What do you think? That is really delicious, man. I was expecting a real gamey, savoury flavour, but actually it's quite mild. Yeah. Good, eh? No wonder they're protected in the mainland. <laughs> That's right. They'll be all gone. Mm. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I'm seasoning the groper with melted butter, pepper and a squeeze of lemon. Good to go. The Chatham Islands Barbie. It didn't come easy, but it did come. It's been an unpredictable culinary adventure. A big thanks to all the islanders and for the power. Bernie. Absolutely lovely. And for the main event, this beautiful wild You're mutton. So Beautiful. Look at that. That is just beautiful to look at, isn't it? Oh, beautiful.